Hey guys, here's Louie. And on this video, we are going to go through the 350, the Pontiac 350 that is, and the Turbo 400 transmission that I decided to go with, with the build of the Lovebird. And we are going to show you, I will show you what you will need and a little history on Pontiacs and how to basically go through the engine real quick on the accessories and stuff like that you're going to need some gaskets um real quick so this is the engine that was given to me with the project of the lovebird okay it was a swap of a job that i did i basically um did some work and i got a whole bunch of parts two cars and some of the trade-offs like um jonathan at vinyl village garage always say horse trading <laughs> um this engine came in that package so this is a pontiac 350 okay and i believe the block itself it's like a 1970 or 71 okay because i did the casting numbers and i checked them out now the heads are 1972 you will find this from 1972 on a pontiac and forward okay and if you ever see this gap right here when the intake manifold does not cover that gap all right that was a design that the pontiac engineers at the time did it and it came out in 1972 now if you have an intake manifold from like 71 and earlier, um, it's not going to cover that because, of course, that design came out from 1972 and, um, like you know, and on. But if you have a 1972 intake manifold in 73 and, and 4, and you keep going, it will cover it. So I'm going to show you which is the correct gasket to cover that hole, okay? And this is the exhaust crossover on Pontiacs, all right? I'm going to tell you a little something that Louis does. I always cover these, okay? And in the gasket, it's supposed to have a gasket that goes over it that will leave it open and it'll also give you the option to close it. I personally always cut a piece of sheet metal, put some RTV on it, and cut and covered it, and then threw my gaskets on it on the intake manifold. And the reason I did that is because I don't drive my cars in the winter, so the crossover is made to warm up the carburetor um, faster, and you know your idle and everything will come nice and relaxed your rpms will come nice and relaxed um uh, faster like if you put the choke on let's say but since i drive my cars um we will say from early spring until maybe late fall if there's no snow that falls i don't need this you know i don't i don't use the crossover so i always have cover them now here's the table with everything so so explain that crossover and that opening on the exhaust crossover exhaust okay that opening you see right there it came out from 1972 forward okay that hole above the cross exhaust crossovers and the design was to keep oil flowing under the valve cover okay to isolate the valves all right so that was a totally different thing that um these engineers came up with all right now that that port that you see that's open did not connect to nothing to another port or passages all right but if you left it open you are going to have an exhaust leak so you need the proper gasket and i'm going to show you what is the proper gasket so real quick and this is for the people that do not know okay the ones that know that's a good thing but we also need to share 
this knowledge and stuff for the people that don't know. This cross member right here, I still need to clean it and paint it and all that. So this is the transmission mount. All right, your turbo 400, your uh, 350s, turbo 350s will use it. All right, which that transmission is a turbo 350. And this is correct for the turbo 350 and also your four speed cross members. Okay, turbo 400, totally different. Now, I have this marked here, transmission cross member bolts. Okay, these are the bolts. These I got from Tractor Supply. If you could get the bolts that have a flange on the head and also the nut that have a flange, you won't need these, these washers really. But um, this will work. And these are not the like original for the cross member, but it will work. Believe me, it will work and you'll save a whole lot of money. So the thread pitch is 3H-16 and the length is an inch and a quarter, okay? This is on grade 8 bolts. That's what I use and it works, okay? And you will need four of them because they go here and to the suffering. That's two there and two there is four. This is the motor mount for any Pontiac V8. And I am preferring 267 through 69 Firebirds V8 cars, okay? And that's the part number right there. There is not a left or a right, okay? They fit either side. You are going to need two bolts for each side to mount it to the block, okay? To mount it to the block of the engine. I have those bolts. They are on the engine. But two bolts, and this is the main center bolt that goes through your motor mounts brackets. Okay, now this is a real special bolt. I never could find this in no hardware store or anything, so I either have to order it or I have originals. All my cars, I was lucky enough to have originals, but I keep building these cars and I'm running out of original hardware. So I bought this from Ames, okay? And this is the original locking... um washers okay that's a lock washer and this is like a, a lock washer with these grooves and that's from ames okay and there it goes i hope you guys can see that right there that's the part number okay this is what i decided to use for the lovebird i actually have um the hei ignition distributor i have it in my 67 with the 455 i have it in my 69 fiber with the 400 I have in it. And I have the updated one that is called the small cap HEI. It looks more period correct in the small cap for so you can have more room. All right, when you're gonna dial your engine in and timing. I have that in the white 68. I decided for the Lovebird here for us to use on uh, the HEI. I love it. This thing will not let you down. If anything ever breaks on this, it's usually the modulator that's inside, okay? I also picked this one up in AutoZone, believe it or not, under a hundred bucks. Okay, uh, the part number. Let me see if I could get the part number real quick for you guys. Uh, I don't find it. But if you guys ever going to order this from AutoZone, put like a 1975 Firebird, okay? With any kind of engine from a 350 to a 400, all right? Or 455 if the option is there for 455 and you will find it because the hei came out from like 1970 late 73 i believe it was on okay hei never left me down believe me they are great and this is your power steering um bolts mounting bolt system here this is the kit. I also ran out of um, original hardware for this, so I had to order it. There goes the part number. All right. And I'm almost 100% sure that I ordered this from inline tube. Okay. I don't have the power steering um, pump or brackets here, but I will because I want to make a video on it. Now, I cannot make all of this into one video because the video will be so long. And I think that when the videos are extremely long, people don't really pay attention to it or they get bored sometimes and they'll miss a whole bunch of information. So, 
here is the gasket okay it's a fell pro gasket there goes the part numbers right there okay and it's right there everything is right there pontiac v8s it should work for all those pontiacs that are right there listed okay and like i told you this is the correct one i have have so many people email me message me through the comments on youtube if you're my facebook friend they also will message me when they're gonna run into that problem hey louie the top have a gap, a gap from the intake manifold to the head what is this or so what did i buy wrong here and no nothing is wrong you just gotta stick to the right gasket okay and this engine somebody put brand new freeze plug the the young gentleman that this um engine actually belonged to before i got it before my friend got it he told me and he was honest with me he said louis looks like i missed one up here which is right there okay i've been covering it with a towel for like that nothing to go in it he was really honest and then this is your heater hose nipple okay this is your heater hose nipple and this looks like to be original with the engine i'm going to take that off and i'm going to put a much better one so i picked this one up on ebay um the gentleman is actually a pontiac engine builder here in pennsylvania he also has an ebay store that he sells things and he sold me this one okay i paid about 45 dollars for this kit but let me tell you something it's worth it because if you don't need everything they try to sell you everything for more money all the freeze plugs and blah 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 these are basically the head um cylinder heads freeze plugs plus your heater hose nipple and let me tell you something you take the gauge of metal that this is made out of to the original this one is 10 times better okay 10 times better 10 times stronger so i think it's definitely worth the money these are your heater holes. I got this one also on eBay, believe it or not. And there goes your part numbers. Okay, this is your upper radiator holes for the first gen fiber V8 car, 67 to 69. And this is your bottom. Okay, there goes the bottom um, part number. Okay. And like I said, everything should be here all the information should be here all right i don't know if you guys can see that i hope you guys can see it but autozone does carry this stuff now i have my transmission seal kit i believe this is the transmissions yeah one of the transmission seal kits oh seals i should say yes it is so i bought the seal for the rear tail shaft seal i might as well change it while it's here much easier for me uh this is another oh boy trying to not yeah this is for the tail shaft seal this is for the pump seal okay pump seal turbo 350 there goes the part number okay the front pump seal which will be here the front pump seal and the real tail shaft see you another part number it's a lot to go through here guys i'm trying my best and also the filter for the turbo 350 and this is what i'm using the filter in the gasket is in here all right this is the thermostat let me see if i could get you guys a part number anyway the thermostat is right there and this is 180. That's what I like to use. 180. 180. Let's check this out. Should be stamped here. There you go. I don't know if you guys could make that out. That's 180 degrees. Okay. So I always use the 180 on the Pontiac engines, no matter what. And like I said in the beginning of the video, I have a 455, I have a 400, I have a 350, this being another 350, and all those engines are running. They are in cars that are drivable, 
the only one that is not drivable right now it will be this car that i'm building but pretty soon i pray to god that it will be a driver so um yeah 180 okay i never had a problem with 180 and i'm gonna show you guys a old trick okay this one actually doesn't have it so sometimes you see a juggler here the juggler is a little piece of metal that starts shaking here on the thermostat okay and i'm gonna show you guys a trick these pontiacs they like to run hot okay and i learned this a long time ago well what you do is you get a small drill bit okay it could be a little smaller than a one eighth inch drill bit and you could just drill a hole right here boom and it will always have a little passage for antifreeze to go through it ain't gonna hurt a thing trust me you you drill it you blow the shavings off make sure there's no shavings in there and put it right back i know guys that will do even two of them to always have a little flow of antifreeze and trust me it works like gold that's an old pontiac um trick okay and also spark plug wires these are the spark plug wires all right ac delco part number right there look at that it even says the gm number that's that's cool remember that if you guys are going to use the hei system all right the newer system and not the point system these spark plugs will work if you're using point system which is this system right here this is a this is a point distributor look at how the spark plug wires look totally totally different from the ones in the box you will see it okay now um i have headers on on this 350 that i bought okay that's what i like to use believe it or not on my pontiacs all, all my cars have headers on them the only car that won't have headers is the 69 ta that hopefully i will stay healthy and strong enough to do that car next that one will have the original manifolds that was used for the trans am on that time you know or, or as close to even if it's a repop but i mean it will be pontiac it won't be headers um for those headers to bolt on your pontiac cylinder head this is the part number mr gasket 917 header bolt set okay and i know it says amc chevrolet but gm so pontiac falls within that gm and that's the uh, thread pitch 3h-16 by one inch length okay these are five grade on um, bolts and here it goes and you guys will need this okay and then the gasket for the headers i don't have yet i will share it once i once i have it now let's go to this so 67 through 69 fiber bell housing bolts the thread pitch is 3 8 16 by one inch and three and a quarter length okay that's it grade eight i always put a washer that's how it looks and these are the bolts that's going to go through the transmission bell housing and bolt on to your engine okay you will need six of them and that what i have here three and three and that makes six my flywheel bolts okay this i have for a long time for a pontiac also okay these are original flywheel bolts and there you go that's dumb thread pitch i apologize i don't know and then pontiac water pump bolts these are extra bolts guys i have had these bolts maybe since i was 22 years old that's 21 years ago <laughs> okay i i've been a hoarder for pontiac for a long time and the reason i have them always laying around I, I used to have many of them, but I've been using them throughout the years is because nine out of nine out of ten, when I'm gonna have an engine that I'm gonna put in a car, they will have the wrong bolts. You see that bolt right here? And let me show you. This bolt is not the correct bolt for Pontiac. If 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 you wanna be 
a real Pontiac head, that's the bolt. Okay. That's the bolt. And I always try to go as close as original as I can. Not all the time I get lucky, but most of the time I do. And this is your hoist um bracket. So this is the bracket that they designed to lift up like a mount, like a, a point to lift up the engine. Okay. And she will go through here. Right. She gets mounted right here on a Pontiac engine. Okay. And I and I want this back on the engine. It was not here on this engine. It was missing. But I went through my box of um parts that I have for Firebird and Pontiac stuff. And trust me, I have a whole lot of stuff. And I got one. Boom. So she will have one to make it look more prettier correct. And I don't have the bracket with me right now. I think it's in the birdcage somewhere. I have to look through it. But this setup, you see here, this bracket, this alternator bracket, is for cars with non-power steering, okay? So that's, what you, that's your application if you had a non-power steering car. Now, for the cars that came with power steering, the bracket is different. I will share it on another video if I have it or by the end of this video if I can find it. I, I just have too many stuff. I got to go through a whole bunch of um boxes and totes that I have. But that's it. Okay. So I figure I will share all this stuff with you guys for the guys and the girls that, that, that does not know. But this is what basically you will need. And some other things that I don't have presented here. But for you guys that was ever stuck on it, there you go. I'm going to share some torque specs on the things that I will be changing. The first thing I want to do is take out this distributor, cover it with a towel for nothing to fall inside the engine. And I want to hit that freeze plug in there. And once I'm done with that, we will move to the intake manifold, guys. So I'll bring you guys right back. All right, guys. So, so far, what I did was I removed the alternator with its bracket that was here because I explained to you guys that that is used for cars on um, Firebirds. First gen, of course, um, that does not come with power steering. And this is going to be a power steering car. So it's a different kind of bracket tree here, which I will be showing you guys as I keep on doing things to this um, Pontiac 350 before I put it on the Lovebird. So I removed that. Now I'm going to show you the tools that you are going to need to remove your intake manifold. Also your distributor back there. Okay. And I will also show you guys how to install the new gasket for your intake manifolds. I'll show you guys how the cylinder heads look and what to look out for. And tips here and there on um, what to do. So after I do that, that will wrap up this um, video. Okay. So your intake manifold have five bolts. Okay. One, two, three, four, and five back here. Also five on this side. So you're going to have five on the left and in the right side and the right side of the of the intake manifold. And these are 916. Okay, you're going to need a 916 socket, which I have over here. You're also going to need a 916 open and box wrench. Okay. And the reason that is because you cannot put your ratchet here. Here, yes, and here, yes, and in the back but not in the inside, okay? Also on that side is the same thing as this side. So you're going to need a box wrench, okay? And for those of you guys that don't know, trying to do this with one, with one hand, um, if it's too tight, okay? You just sneak another wrench like this, and it gives you some uh, a nice um, leverage to... Open her up and loosen her up and get back to work. All right. So that's a 916 box wrench for these two and these two. And the ones that are on the outside, 916 socket is good enough. 
but this one you will need a deep socket okay or you could use the box wrench if it's not that tight um also a 716 you could use a box wrench or a ratchet i like to use a ratchet and this is a notorious bolt to be known to snap and get stuck in your intake manifold okay if you're dealing with an old engine that haven't been put apart for a long time these are notorious to snap now in the past when i need to replace all the seals all the gasket or go through the engine and i'm removing it from an engine that is really old and haven't been on um, gone through in a while i supply heat okay now you could supply heat in many ways you could use a uh, a heat gun okay a heat gun you could use a torch okay with a torch you are going to give heat to more areas than just isolating this area but i have used both methods and they have worked for me okay but it, it sucks when you break this bolt in here the threads and it gets snapped in here because she's very she's a thin bolt and remember just a 7 16th head okay and this is a really important step also i show you guys i don't want to jump the gun of how when you replace when you're placing back the intake manifold there's a there's an important step that a lot of guys don't do when doing pontiacs and they end up having leaks so i'm going to show you guys everything um also for the water pump is a half inch socket or open um box wrench you are going to need on the side here is 916 this one over here also 916 this is the pointers i'm going to give you guys remember that this one if you guys that never did pontiac and you guys that did you know that this one goes all the way through the timing cover and it goes into your block if you're successful to to remove this please and i'm saying please make your life easier clean the bolt all the way through okay and when you're going to install it put anises on the bolt okay or grease because she likes to get rusty and stuck in here in the sleeve okay not so much into the block okay they do get rusty in here too but i mean you could probably be successful and break it loose and then here it gives you the problem it starts fighting you and i seen these snap also so that's also a tip let me keep on um i'm gonna remove all this for a pontiac engine this is the pcv valve all right pcv positive crank case ventilation all right so for the ventilation to come and escape up and i'll go get burned out and out to the out to the exhaust this is your pvc on a pontiac okay right here all right take it out get a new one there's a grommet i always will give you guys the advice of changing the grommet okay i'm going to take a good look at this one and if i have to change it i will change it this one fits pretty tight you know when they are worn when the pvc valve is kind of dancing in there okay and usually you'll you'll put this to go to the highest point of the manifold all right this manifold has this nice feature here at the very top okay before the carburetor but i always put them on the i'm going to use an edelbrock carburetor i always put them on the top on the on the front of the carburetor of an edelbrock that's where i always put my pvc i'll see this time if i'm going to do this i might and just plug this hole here but this is the pvc valve a lot of people don't know that okay and this is over here a water pathway okay so while your engine is spinning because it's on and your water pump is pumping water okay water being your antifreeze coolant it goes here okay and this supplies the coolant for both sides okay your left and your right head cylinder head all right so it's really important that you have a good seal on the thermostat housing okay and i'm going to tell you guys something a lot of times these are not machined nice and flat and i have half time that i try to use just the gasket 
and it doesn't seal for as much as I try or the housing that goes on top it, it won't seal okay so either or either this one is a little wavy or the housing that sits on it is a little waving it doesn't give me a good seal so I kind of deleted using the gasket and now I just put a little bead of RTV and I seal it okay it happens to be that I need to change the thermostat or whatever happens I just break the seal and remove it clean everything clean this surface clean the housing surface and apply my bead again because I've been successful of not using the gasket and just putting a bead of RTV okay so it's really important this surface keep an eye and when you're going to be putting back your manifold here you want to use RTV because here is where it needs a nice tight seal for you guys not to have no coolant leaking okay so let me get busy I'm going to remove the bolts of the intake manifold okay five here and one here and this shall be off the engine guys I'm going to remove also the distributor this is a distributor wrench i had this for a long 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 time okay um it's not really really that important to use it now which i already cracked the bolt open so this this bracket here you guys see here is your distributor um hold down bracket okay but it's nice to have these wrenches for when you're doing the timing because remember there you're gonna have spark plug um spark plug wires in your way um maybe electrical wires you don't have that much room to be playing around here you're gonna have this hole in your way also the heater holes so this is nice and bent all right for you could just fit that sucker right in there and start playing with your timing um that's also a 916 bolt and i'm going to be removing the nipple here your heater hose nipple and i also have to install a freeze plug i will show that on this video let me get busy here and i'll bring you back once this is off all right guys so here i have the intake manifold taken off all right and i already see a no-no okay we're gonna get that to that in a second so i cleaned the surface okay the ceiling surface of the freeze plug with 100 grit sandpaper S please put a shop rag here first clean the surface with um the sandpaper i used 100 grit and i did awesome i don't know if you guys can see that but it's nice and shiny there now then i took uh, another clean rag with alcohol and just wiped it and this is what i'm going to be using around the freeze plug okay is the high temp gasket maker so as i get the gasket maker opened i will show you guys how i install it okay just getting the gasket maker open all right guys um sorry for that pause the gasket maker was giving me some trouble to open it but that's the size right there the freeze plug that goes here okay and now let me get my socket ready to rock and roll and this is what i did i just applied a little sealant around the freeze plug and this is a 18 mm socket all right let's drive this one in
I'm using a depth blow hammer. All right, and she's just slightly below the head, okay? And the little cooling that you see that came out, I mean, the little RTV you see that came out, I just go like this with my finger, smooth out that bead, okay? I'll get a rag and clean it up. Hmm, there you go, baby. Clean that up a little bit. There you go. Beautiful, nice and sealed. Okay. And like I said, here's the size of that freeze plug. Now we're going to be moving to the intake manifold gasket the correct one not the one that leaves this um opening exposed and i almost forgot one thing i want to remove the nipple now while i have all this space open to me and install the new one this is what i'm using a chisel and a hammer okay and when you like well i would like to do is just hit it in different spots here. Over here. She already started moving. It's already coming out. It's coming out there. There you go. Bye bye. Now I will clean this surface the same way I did with that one. Stick a sharp rag into the hole. Take your sandpaper. I use 100 grit. Clean the surface and install the new heater hose nipple. And guys, when you are done cleaning, cleaning the mounting surface here, where this is going to live, this will be living at the cylinder hole here. This is your water hose nipple. Okay. Look at, look, oh, geez. You see how dirty this thing is? Um, Look at the original from the new one. Totally different. This one is way thicker. Okay. At both ends, here and here, way thicker. So, you really don't have to, but I like to have a peace of mind and I just put a little bit of high heat um, RTV like I did to the freeze plug. And she goes right here. Okay. You have to also drive this one in. And I'm using a 15 16 socket, placing it on top. Okay. And driving her in with the. On that blow hammer here.
He's fighting me a little bit. Let me see. Okay. Uh -huh. There you go. A little more. Now you can hear how the sound change is letting you know that she has sit in and position herself nice and tight. Okay. You're also gonna see a bead of silicone going on top, all right, of the RTV stuff. And if you can, I just move it out a little bit. There you go. Okay, my nice and neat. Hope you guys can see that. Okay, my nice and neat there. And now I am ready to clean up the top of the engine and get ready to show you guys how to install the correct intake manifold gasket. All right, and now on one side, which is this side right here, I have the correct gasket for the intake that we are using with these heads, these cylinder heads, okay? Here is the cutout, all right? That a lot of people don't know about and this they will leave it open like I said in the beginning of the video and They will end up Ordering this gasket, which is not correct Okay Now you have a choice in the kit Where this gasket um, Comes and the kit they give you an option You could block the cutout okay which don't do nothing for the intake manifold but just leave your uh, exhaust um escaping through here okay so you're gonna have an exhaust leak they give you an option of keeping your exhaust crossover okay on your intake manifold keeping it all right brings two one for this side one for that side or like i like to do it Blocking it now. I'm gonna tell you something. If I didn't want to buy a brand new gasket, but I, I the reason I really bought it is just to show you guys and whoever runs into this problem. Well, this is how you're gonna solve it. Really and, and truly, I would have just have cut this here and get a thin piece of sheet metal, okay, or may, maybe even 18 gauge because I mostly have 18 gauge. Around the garage because that's how I repair the firebirds. Okay, steel 18 gauge and I will do a cutout just like this I will cut this cut this Okay, and I will put it with some RTV in the back For it could stay stuck in there cutting this away for this could be nice and flat surface to match this and I put my intake on I have done it plenty of times there ain't no problems or nothing like I said, I eliminate the crossover because the exhaust crossover, because especially with uh, fuel that they selling us nowadays not being the greatest, it even prevents you from having the vapor lock, okay? And that's why I do it. I've been doing it for years, and I love it. And the uh, Lovebird that this 350 is going to go inside for, um, to give it the power is going to be the power plant. I'm going to do exactly that. I'm going to install this, okay, and block it off and call it a day. Now, using, this is the old gasket. Let me get the new gasket. So using the new gasket, I'm going to show you guys something in case you run into it. In case you guys plan to use this, you will run into it. This side here, Okay, if you feel it, it has like a little rubber feeling. 
This is your seal, your ceiling mate, ceiling surface, okay? And when you put this, these orange plugs, these orange plugs that come in the kit, is to guide you and have a, a place here to hold it for you and it doesn't move. Now, what, are, what do you see here? She's lined up with the exhaust ports, okay? The water port, the antifreeze port, coolant port. And what do you see here? She's a little longer, okay? Check this out. She's a little longer, okay? So that I will take, if you guys don't have a old manifold gasket to go by, it's not a problem, okay? Let me bring the intake manifold. <laughs> so I need one now for this side, okay? What I will do is, I will place my intake manifold gasket, all right? And on the side, I need to cut it. The only thing you need to do is trace it right here. You trace this out and you'll cut it. Not a big deal, all right? You're gonna cut that little extra material that they give you, you are going to cut it. Me that I have this one to go by, all right, and I know it's like this, always double check, you have it the right way. You just take it out, okay? You take it out and you place on top of it. See, you could even use these to guide you, okay? And I know to trace this and I'll cut it. And it's as simple of getting a marker, all right? It's not that difficult. You lay it down, okay? I know there she's straight, here she's straight, and I will trace it. That's all you need. That's it. There you go. I hope you guys can see that. I traced it. I'm going to get a pair of scissors, cut it off, and I'll bring you guys back. All right, the only place I will use a little sealant is, um, this is the Ultra Black, okay, silicone gasket maker will be around where the water jacket is, okay? That's it, just around this area, nothing else. You just want to put a little bit, not a whole lot, okay? All right, let me show you guys. That should be, sorry, that, that should be more than enough right there. Okay, now remember to use these little guides and holders at the same time. They do both. They guide you to put it on the cylinder head. Okay. There you go. Beautiful. Okay, then my exhaust crossover, I told you guys that I like to plug them. Okay, I like to plug them sh shut. So, right here where she's going to be sealing for me, just put a little RTV, not a whole lot. 
Oke. Okay. That's all I did there. Now I'll put her here and leave her there until it's time. Make sure she's nice and flat with the gasket. Okay, there you go. Nice and flat with the gasket. And as the manifold sits down, you start to torque those bolts. So squeeze everything in. Same thing with this side. Okay. Take it off. Okay, let's put her on. You go. She's wavy here, but believe me, once the once the intake manifold comes, you see, she flattens out. Same thing. Take your RTV. And just dab a little bit at the surface that it is exposed for she could mate and give you that nice sealed doesn't take much okay when i am done putting the intake manifold i'll blow all this crap out i don't want to blow it now because all these ports are open make sure that she's nice and flush okay uh huh. Alrighty. Okay. <laughs> All right. And now I will put a little RTV also on this side because it is where the antifreeze is going to be coming out. And I don't want no leaks, okay? This is just from my experience. Better to be safe than sorry. Okay? I don't have to take nothing out and take off the whole thing that I just did. If I just take my time and put a little sealant here. Okay. There you go. Alrighty, and if this makes you a little nervous that it will be still open or any leaks, you could put a little bit on your finger and just seal her up also. Okay, I mean a little dab goes very far away, very far into this. Alright, you don't need nothing to go nuts about it. All right, boom, little bit here, little there, there you go, shut her down, because you don't want no exhaust leaks, right, <laughs> so like I say, better to be safe than sorry, now guys, here are the timing cover, okay, it likes to leak. It's notorious for, for Pontiacs to leak right here. I always, always, always put some, some RTV on my finger. And I put some on there. Okay. Because I don't want no leaks. Trust me. It's not much. You pass it around with your finger. You should not have no headaches because sometimes these surfaces they're not flat, they're not even at all. Okay, I'll show you guys what I'm talking about, and that's right there. Yep, and I'll do the same thing now to the intake manifold. Let me wipe my finger here. 
Oke. Okay. All right. This intake manifold here takes this little rubber, okay? All right, a little rubber grommet. And what I like to do is I put some RTV on one side so she could stick there and not move, not really for leaks or to prevent a leak. See, I put it right there. To keep it centered for me for move without movement the rtv will hold her and then the same thing at this mating surface that she's going to mate with a timing belt i will put it on my finger okay i put it on my finger and i'll put this, the rtv all over like this believe you me I've been doing it like this, and I don't have no headaches. I see Pontiacs all the time, and they have a leak right here. And like I told you, I don't want any anything like that. Okay, put this away. Clean my finger. And let's put her down. This is good. This is good. Over the PVC. Put her into her water. Ports there. Make sure she's all lined up. Okay. Now, this is the trick with a Pontiac. You're not going to put your bolt right away. Okay. You are going to drive in and tighten this bolt right here. Let me see if you guys can see that. Yeah, you guys can see that. This bolt right here, the 716 bolt, and I'm going to tell you why. It's really important to start with that bolt. Because if you don't start with that bolt, you're going to have problems. And this is the bolt I want you guys to use, that I use to drive in the manifold okay and you have a good seal right here always use a little anises all right this is permatex anises aluminum anises that's what i use okay you put it right here remember that you're you're going to be tying this bolt into an aluminum intake even if you use the metal intakes use use something on that bolt okay now we're going to just tie her down and I don't know if you guys could see it, but she is moving forward. And over here is going to be nice and tight for a nice, good, tight seal. All right. Yep, there she goes. And believe me, she moved. And I don't know if you guys could see it. I hope you guys could see it. Right here. Right here. You see the, the RTV that squeezed out? It's because she went and she this bolt drove the intake manifold forward and gave it a good, nice seal. Now, this bolt, the torque spec is 15, okay? Oh, and that's 15 foot-pounds. I'll show you how I know that. And after doing this for so much, you will know, you will have the feel, okay, of, of when to stop. Any axis of anesthesia that came out, I'll wipe it. Before I paint the, the engine, I will wipe the whole engine with alcohol two or three, four times before I spray any paint. And guys, look at that. Okay, check that out. The silicone 
squeeze itself out all around and guess what it doesn't look messy okay and once you paint the engine you're not going to see that because it's not like a blob of silicone came out just enough to give you a good sealed and no water leaks all right okay that feels good and now we are going to take the intake manifold bolts all right i already apply antices to them and check this out this is a good tip here you get yourself a box f stands for forward left stands for your left side the right for your right side so i know on my left side i'm going to put this bolt first and go towards the back and on the right side will be this bolt first and go towards the back um and don't get cocky don't think you will remember everything or anything like that you could take pictures if you want everybody has a cell phone nowadays but i like to keep it old school and it's neat and keep it just like this so i know this is my left side cylinder head and i'll start putting my bolts together okay and this will be the second one this is the second one and so forth so on okay i'll bring you guys back once i finish doing that all right guys so i went and i just um snugged each um intake manifold bolts you could use a ratchet okay with a long um with a long socket you could use a ratchet with a long socket i have a short socket here if i need a, a long socket i have it but i'm not going to go to the toolbox and grab it now and i have an open open and 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 box wrench okay and this kind of goes like the x pattern when you are going to snug your lug nuts on your wheel of a car so i like to start at my outer corners okay the water especially the water where the water is going to travel because if you guys could see i want i want to see some of that silicone coming out and i know it's sealing and later i just move it out with my finger and trust me when you're going to paint the engine you're not going to see nothing because it's not like a you ain't going to leave a blob of a mess there then from here i will go to this one okay now the torque specs is 40 foot pounds for each manifold bolts all right i have a torque um wrench but believe me i've been doing this long enough that i know the feeling all right go boom that feels good this one feels good i'm gonna go over here feels nice feels good you go back okay beautiful all right all right oh there you go see as you torque them they will keep working his way down until they they reach a final tight spec there all right mm -hmm. nice beautiful beautiful the ones inside want to tie them up mm, that feels good Ah, that feels good. That one feels good. <clears throat> that feels good. All right. Uh huh. all right go back to the corners there you go got a little movement more on that one nice 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 okay 
I have my towel here and I will just go like this boom and clean my finger that's nice and smooth the paint will cover the residue of the silicone okay boom like I said before I'd rather be safe than sorry so I do apply a little silicone on this one this section this section because the coolant will be passing through well guys I hope you learned something uh, about a Pontiac engine this applies to your V8 engines okay and I'm going to share something with you that is really important to me in my um in my garage here so these are your torque specs okay we just say torque references reference okay and we were doing the intake manifold so intake manifold to cylinder head 916 bolts 40 all right says lubricant dry i don't like to put it dry i like to put them in with a little lubricant i use anesthes okay and that's 40 foot pounds okay your torque specs this gives you all your bolts when you're putting an engine together all right let me see if i can share something else with you guys here all right and it's not that i'm a genius the gasket and the cylinder heads from the year it started to the year that it wasn't present is right in this book i love this book this is another part of louis like really important tools and the garage okay is like a bible to me for pontiac okay and i have this book i couldn't tell you how long but i have it for some years okay and i learned a whole lot because when i started this hobby back when i was 22 years old i did not have youtube to go to google to go to for these cars i had nothing but to go to a Barnes and Nobles, buy a book, read, read, read until it stuck to my head. And now that I'm getting to be in my 40s, I got to go back now and then to refresh my head. <laughs> I'm not 22 no more. But guys, if you want to put your engine together and be 100% about how to do it, just don't look at me also buy yourself this book you probably could download it now on the internet and put it down on your on your phone i don't really know about that but i'm kind of old school i like to have the book and i use these uh, sheet protectors these plastic sheet protectors because my hands are dirty all the time and i touch it and if it gets nasty with some kind of oil or residue i just wipe it away okay and the page do not get messed up I have the manual service for Firebird, okay, 67 to 69, and I do the same thing, all right? So still a whole lot to go here in the garage, still a whole lot to be, um, to put this things together here, which I'm talking about the things is the transmission and the engine, but I'm getting there little by little because I want to see the Lovebird with his own drivetrain, okay, moving out of the garage. By the way, while I was making the video earlier today, the brake lines came in. Whoever wants me to share the brake lines, the kit that I bought, and how to install them, leave me a comment on this video, or else I'm skipping it because <laughs> it takes a long time, and I need to get this thing done. Guys, thank you for everything. Please don't forget to share, like. All right, you guys that haven't subscribed, subscribe. Don't forget your thumbs up. I love all you guys comment. So leave me a comment. And here goes another step forward to seeing the lovebird moving under her own power. And like I always say, keep your hands dirty and your project will move forward. Bye bye.